Hi, my name is Steve Reed. I'm a husband, I'm a son, an author, and I'm a storyteller. I tell stories about Jesus, but I tell them from a little bit of a different perspective. I tell them in costume as the half-brother of Jesus, James. You know him from the book of James. But I tell stories in churches and retreats and conferences, all different sorts of venues, as if I were James and growing up in the household with the Son of the Living God. Every story that I tell has a, has a lesson of some sort that goes with that story. And those lessons are all adapted to the specific audiences that I have, whether it's a group of teens or maybe young adults, maybe married couples, whatever the case is. There's always going to be a lesson of some sort. One of my favorite lessons that I share is a lesson of us playing hide-and-seek with God. And we do it all the time, each of us. The stories, again, they go throughout the life of Jesus, through his ministry, even into his death and resurrection. I've even got a little bit of a twist on the birth of my big brother. And you think, how would you do that? James wasn't born yet. Uh, you've got to watch it to see. I invite you to watch this short video clip of different presentations that I've done, just little excerpts that I've taken from several different presentations. Sit back, enjoy them. And if I can be of any help to you and your congregation, your group, please feel free to drop a note. I'd love to visit with you more. This is James signing off. Well, Steve, but you know what I mean. Have a blessed day. I want you to, to, first of all, go back in time with me. A couple thousand years. James is about 10 years old, and his big brother, Jesus, is about 12. Now, what do typical Jewish boys do at this time? Well, they obviously spend time every day doing their Torah lessons. But they're going to be spending time doing chores around the house especially helping their father in his shop. But the favorite thing that they do is they play games. They're young boys. They're going to play games. Their favorite game of all is hide and seek. But there's a challenge. The challenge is James can never find Jesus, and Jesus always finds James. And, you know, Jesus is kind of like the son of God. So he can you know, defy whatever stuff is out there so so I, I take you back a few years and they're playing hide and seek I say so, so come with me for just a brief moment okay I'm it today so I'm gonna find him I'm gonna find him this time I'm I'm gonna cheat okay so here, here we go Deuteronomy 1 Deuteronomy 2 Deuteronomy 3 Deuteronomy 10 15 25 50, 100. Okay, I can't make it too obvious. I gotta find some other friends first. So, Mark, Mark. Hey, Jude, I see you behind that tree. Ah, I gotta find Jesus. Okay. Hey, how did you get a? I, I, that's just not fair. Have you ever felt like that? You know, you're seeking God where you think God is and where you think God wants you, but in reality, he's over here. Now, he's all around us, obviously, but he's working over here. He wants you over here instead of over there. So that's our lesson. How do we seek God? Where are we seeking God? Are we seeking God in our comfort zone where we want God to be? Or are we seeking God where he wants us to be? But this day was different. This day, the crowd just kept coming. 50 people. 100 people. 500 people. The last I heard, there were over 5,000 men alone 
not counting all the women and children. There must have been 15,000 people there. All of them to hear my brother. I remember one by one, people would be coming and asking Jesus for a blessing. And I remember, and in our early 20s, Jesus would take off for two or three days at a time. And he'd just, he'd just go off. And he would always say he's going to spend time with the Father. And my response was always, well, the Father's back in the shop working. And I'm covering for you again doing your chores. No, not that Father. I'm going to our Heavenly Father. Fine, whatever. I didn't understand. So off he'd go. Two or three days later, he'd come back. And he would always share stories and things that he learned from the scripture. I remember Jesus was in a big crowd of people. And a Roman centurion came. Now, you don't mess with the Roman centurions. They're there to do really one thing. Keep peace at all costs. And if they can't, they're going to hurt somebody or kill somebody. Plain and simple. This guy was about so tall, he was covered from head to toe with armor. And he walked straight up to Jesus. And I'm thinking, what in the world is he going to do? Is he going to address, arrest my brother? And he says, my servant is ill, would you heal him? My servant is ill, would you heal him? Jesus, do you know who this guy is? And Jesus says, take me to him. And this Roman soldier says, no, I'm not worthy to have you in my house. If you just speak the words, he will be healed. You see, I'm a Roman centurion. When I give a command, when I give an order, my soldiers follow. You have that same kind of authority. If you just speak the words, my servant will be healed. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. What's going to happen next? Jesus was everything to us. I walked away from Lazarus' home. And I'm just walking down this path, and I ended up in this little clear in this field. And I started having flashbacks. I started having flashbacks of all the things that Jesus and I used to do. When we were young boys, when we were playing in the fields, or playing hide and seek, or, or playing David and Goliath, or whatever. I couldn't get it out of my head. And then I started having flashbacks of those times that he would go away for two or three days and come back. And then he'd share scripture that the Father had taught him. And he's turned telling me those scriptures, I started remembering those things from the prophet Isaiah. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. Jesus just got 39 lashes. He's got stripes all over his back. His stripes you are healed. Like a lamb before the slaughter. He stood there silently. Jesus didn't say a word to his accusers. He stood there silently. Isaiah was talking about Jesus. Isaiah was talking about Jesus. Jesus. 